So, if anyone doesn't know, Skull and Bones released on Steam. After being out on its own platform, of course, Ubisoft Connect, possibly one of the worst things that have been created by mankind, going up there with, I don't know, Greek Fire, maybe releasing on one of the most successful platforms, or if not the most successful platform in gaming, could have boosted the game. Uh, um... Okay, it hasn't quite worked. Let's actually delve into what happened with the release for Skull and Bones. First of all, let's talk about that harsh reality of the game's launch. When it came out on Steam, it, the reviews started coming in straight away. Ubisoft hoping to boost up the player numbers and maybe quell some of the, well, the hatred that it got at launch after we've now had two seasons of extra content. It didn't quite work. Skull and Bones is currently sitting at 62% of current reviews on Steam as positive which, you know, sets it at mixed. Now, this might seem fine having over 50% of people liking it, but a game that costs this much, just over half calling it tolerable, I'm not entirely sure that's a great thing for your company. It's clear that the majority of players feel something went seriously wrong here. And for a game that Ubisoft have been hyping for years, with such a budget reported of the hundreds of millions, them even going as far as calling it quadruple A, it isn't just disappointing, this is almost tragic. Adding insult to injury, the game is currently sitting at 60% off on Steam and about £20, as opposed to the £50 that it is originally at. Now, of course, this is just an introductory offer that should end on the 5th of September, and this is not anything new. When games launch on Steam, they always come with sometimes a discount offer if you pick it up straight away. But it's normally 5 to 10% off, maybe even pushing 20%. But 60% off the game if you buy it now. Yeah, they are definitely panicking and trying to get people to pick it up. Yet it still failed to draw any sort of substantial player base. I don't know. And it is almost baffling how they've managed this. Remember, this is a quadruple A game made by one of the biggest game studios in the world, set in one of the most popular time periods and of course genres of all time and it peaked at just over 2,000 concurrent players hell let loose has triple that mountain blade 2 battle lord has 10 times that these are arguably double a games even smaller indie games completely blow that out of the water and this title has only been out on steam for less than a month that is a dismal turnout especially because this title was supposed to be ubisoft's next big hit so, what went wrong? Well, let's start with the game's most glaring issues, and this is the thing that's been repeated so many times, and I've felt this, because, funnily enough, out of recording so many videos on Skull and Bones, it's meant that I've played it more than a lot of people. Kind of unwillingly, but hey, it happens. It's such an empty title. The general consensus amongst players is that Skull and Bones feels more like an unfinished tech demo than a fully realized game. Now, going through the Steam reviews is just insanity, as you might expect. One reviewer lamented, Played the beta, felt like an empty solar shell with nothing but shooting cannons to entertain you. Bought it on sale recently, when it came onto Steam, and it's still a solar shell with nothing to do but shoot cannons. That word, soulless, it kept popping up time and time again in reviews, and it is insane. A game like Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, which kind of inspired Skull and Bones, soul is one thing that that title does have, and they've managed to completely rip it out. The game world, despite its beautiful ocean vistas and dynamic weather, feels so lifeless. In a game that really encourages you to go hunting and whaling and, well, shark killing or crocodile wrestling, there is no sign of life within the vast areas that you can explore. The settlements and cities, which should have been bustling hubs of pirate activity, are described as empty or just thrown in, con contributing nothing to your sense of immersion or adventure. This is just because they're cutscenes. They're glorified levels that you can walk around, and that's it. You can walk or slow jog. There's no combat hand-to-hand. -hand. There's no real interacting with NPCs other than through dialogue boxes and just setting you off on your next inevitable side quest to, well, fetch another resource. And this collecting resources and non-important side quests is such a sore point for the gameplay. While ship-to-ship -ship combat is the core mechanic, it just quickly becomes so monotonous. Another Steam reviewer summed it up perfectly, saying, Every mission feels like a copy-paste of the last. With nothing but shooting cannons over and over again, it gets old so fast. Ubisoft seemed to have missed the mark by focusing so heavily on this single aspect of the game, but neglecting to flesh out any other pirate-themed activities. 
that could have added so much more depth and variety. For example, there is no hand-to-hand -hand combat. There's no boarding enemy ships to engage in the swashbuckling sword fights that everybody loved from Black Flag. There's no treasure hunts that require cunning and exploration. They just give you maps and you go to that location. You dig it up and, well, there we go. We've got more treasure. Where's the fun in that? It's almost like doing a job within a game, just going from one place to another with no real gameplay. And sometimes that works if the world is interesting enough and there's enough stuff to stop out on the way, but Skull and Bones does not have that. It offers such a repetitive loop of fetch quests and your weird cannon battles that feel so light and floaty that many players just feel so tiresome after a few hours. One of the most damning critiques comes from those who expected this to be a spiritual success to Black Flag, and that's kind of what it started out as, as a standalone expansion for the game, which is the complete reason why everybody was confused on its release. Maybe just Black Flag is considered the gold standard of pirate games, so trying to hit that is way too hard, but I don't really think living up to a game from 11 years ago should be your crown and glory especially when you fall not just short, but into the biggest pit I've ever seen. In Black Flag, naval combat was just one part of a much larger, richer experience that included this on-foot exploration, a gripping narrative and a sense of progression as you upgraded your ships and crew. Skull and Bone strips away everything that made Black Flag great, leaving players with what feels like a hollow imitation. Another frustrated viewer on Steam said, it's Black Flag without the Assassin's Creed part. You don't play as a pirate, you play as a ship. The story is just so meh that I clicked through it. Nothing memorable. I feel a little bit bad for anybody that put the time and effort into actually following the story because there is pretty much nothing within the game. And it's not just the content or the story that is the worst of the worst. Ubisoft has never been a stranger to disastrous launches, yet the technical issues within Skull and Bones, oh my word. Reports of crashing, graphical glitches, poor optimizations, and this just further sours that experience for more players. People can put up with bugs and issues if they actually like the title, or at least they see promise on it. But after it's advertised with the amount of budget that it has, and people paying as much as they did upon launch, it's just disgusting when it comes out and doesn't work the way it was intended. On top of that, the game's character models and cosmetics have been widely criticized. Another Steam reviewer said the character models are so dirty, generic, and bland. All of the in-game cosmetics make you look like a pirate hobo. Anything decent is behind a paywall. This sense of cheapness pervades the game, making it feel more like a low-budget title than the quadruple A experience that it was supposed to be. But that's not everything. Now, whilst this has been incredibly negative on Skull & Bones launch, because that is the overwhelming majority of reviews, I did want to add in some other side to it, because not everybody is entirely down on Skull & Bones, especially now we can see a bit more transparently through the Steam launch. You see, this was one of the main issues with Skull & Bones coming out on their own platform, and it was, don't get me wrong, entirely intentional. We couldn't see play accounts, and we couldn't see proper reviews from your average Joe. It was a lot of big companies and journalists, which you know how trustworthy sometimes they can be. There's been a small subset of players that granted found some enjoyment, particularly those who picked it up on, well, this steep discount, because it does, of course, quell some of the sour taste that you have. For some people, they have said the game offers a casual, if shallow, pirate experience that's worth a few hours of fun. One of the players admitted, I've been having fun with it. It's fun just to hop in, blow some stuff up, now I understand what I'm doing. Another noted that whilst the game isn't worth its full price, it's not bad as a cheap pirate sim. If you can get past the usual Ubisoft nonsense, it's fun for 20 bucks, they said. But even these more positive reviews, they come with some significant caveats, suggesting that the game is actually only worth it if you go in with low expectations or if you get it at a really discounted price. It's like being punched for years and years by a bodybuilder, and then when your brother does it, it's not quite as bad because he's not as strong. But uh, you're still getting punched. This is not the experience you want or deserve, and especially if you're paying for, well, no bruises, <laughs> preferably. I don't know where that analogy went. <laughs> I was scraping so close to something. So what is the takeaway from all this? Skull and Bones is a game. <clears throat> Okay, no, that's not that's not my conclusion, I promise. But it's a game that had the potential to be something truly special. Yet instead, all it feels like is a missed opportunity. Ubisoft has delivered something that's visually impressive. Okay, sometimes, not always. 
but lacking complete amount of substance. As wide as an ocean, as deep as a puddle. The repetitive gameplay, technical issues, and uninspired design has left so many players feeling that they've sold an empty treasure chest. Whilst there is some fun to be had, particularly if you're a diehard fan of naval combat and managed to grab it on sale, the general consensus is that Skull and Bones is way more of a flop, and especially now we can see it on Steam. I am glad that it came to the new platform because it lets us have a better picture of the way that this game has been received. Because everybody knew that Skull and Bones was a bit of a disaster and it just wasn't what anybody expected. Yet we didn't quite get a true picture of the lack of success. As the game sails off into the horizon, it leaves behind a trail of disappointed players and unmet expectations. Some just because they wanted a bit better and some incredibly angry because they feel like they've been robbed of their money. Can Ubisoft turn the ship around? I don't really think so at this point. We've had two seasons, we've had content coming into the game and funnily enough, it's exactly what I expected it to be. It's more skins, uh, mythical bosses to fight, and more ship designs. But that's not the issue. People don't need more cosmetics or more ships or more mythical beasts to fight. They need a game that doesn't have floaty combat. They need a game where they can fight hand to hand or board other pirates. They need a game with a well written story and well fleshed out quests, but we will never get that. We can never get that from Skull and Bones at this point. And I think I'm saying it now. I finally come to the conclusion that Skull and Bones is dead and buried. They do not know what they're doing with this title. And maybe we just have to wait for, well, what's next? Which is supposedly going to be a complete remake of Black Flag. Could they mess that one up? I wouldn't put it past them.